What up, y'all? This is the great one himself, Seneca Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. Here with an anarchy moment. This is totally off the cuff and just throwing things out there, which, you know, unlike my normal podcasts, which are so well planned and scripted and mapped out. I just finished, well, didn't quite finish. I'm near the end of the James Bond movie, Die Another Day with the Bond girl, Miranda Frost, who is probably, unless there's somebody hotter in the next movie, which is the last one I'm gonna be watching, I am going to have to declare her the hottest Bond girl ever. Anyhow, as I'm watching the end of this movie, and the complete lack of intelligence on the parts of the characters, the critical thinking, the exposition, it just makes me think, because I've been talking about movies, I talked about movies in the podcast prior to this, the stating the obvious prior to this. And what separates great movies from shitty movies, and also just the the fact that in media like movies, you can't really have intelligent characters because then you don't have a movie, right? It's the horror movie. If if you're in the horror movie, if the teenagers lost in the woods don't all split up, then they can't get killed, right? It's like, God, I can't remember. Was it... I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Richard Pryor that did this routine. Some of you may remember back, there was a movie called the Amityville Horror about this haunted house, which is, you know, based on real incidents, blah, blah, sure, whatever. Anyhow, you know, in the movie, the people move into the house, and they're hearing voices saying, get out of the house, and blood's running down the walls and shit. You know, and Richard Pryor did this routine about this, and I'm paraphrasing Richard Pryor's routine. You know, he's like, yeah, that movie wouldn't exist without white people because white people stay in the house when that shit happens. Now, if black people moved into that house, black people would walk in the door and be like, oh, wow, this is a really nice house, man. This is great. I love this place. And then a voice would say, get out of the house. And they'd look at each other and say, oh, too bad we can't stay. Let's get the fuck out. Right? It's true. If people in the movies weren't stupid, for the most part, there would be no movies. Because the shit in the movie wouldn't happen. Because you have to be stupid to fall into these giant plot holes, right? This is why I think there are movies out there. The movies I think are brilliant are the ones that have at least mostly solid plots. Like Casablanca. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like Alien. These movies don't have giant plot holes in them. The characters don't do stupid shit. Okay, in Alien, Ash did something stupid when he tried to kill Ripley by sticking a rolled-up magazine down her throat. I don't know why he wouldn't just choke her or break her neck, considering he's a fucking robot. Oh, spoiler. Oops. But maybe it's because his brain was malfunctioning because he's a robot. I don't know. Anyway, die another day. So we're coming to the conclusion of the movie. And the bad guy is using his satellite, Icarus, to direct sunlight in a concentrated beam and essentially make a weapon that fires direct sunlight. So think of it, for those of you who play Command and Conquer, it's like the ion cannon. Except it doesn't have to recharge because it runs on sunlight. He is a North Korean... And, of course, he wants to invade South Korea because that's what the script says, which is going to lead to world domination or something. I don't know. So he's got Icarus, and the American government shoots a missile at Icarus. So Icarus turns around. Icarus works as this giant umbrella that collects the sun and then focuses the collected sun into the sunbeam ray, which makes the weapon. So the missile launched by the Americans, is going towards Icarus. Icarus turns around and shoots the fucking missile. Okay. First of all, Icarus can only shoot in one direction at a time. 
All you have to do is launch two or three or maybe even four missiles from different directions. But of course, that would have nullified the entire rest of the movie. So you have to be stupid. All right, then the bad guy, he's got Icarus and he is using the sunlight beam. He's shooting into the DMZ, the demilitarized zone between North Korea and South Korea. Oh, I just thought of, while I'm talking about critical thinking, I can't talk long because I've got to go be on location soon. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do another critical thinking if I remember, because I saw something today on the Twitter stream and I looked at it and I said, that can't be real. And I saw it was real. And then I saw the context and it's, it's a beautiful example of how to apply critical thinking to something you're reading in the fucked up mainstream media. It's, it's one of the best examples of how this works. Anyway, back to Icarus. So the bad guy, Meanwhile, Miranda Frost is looking really fucking hot in these tight white pants and this black little, like, halter top thingy, and I'm really wanting to have sex with her. Meanwhile, the bad guy has Icarus, and he's shooting the sunlight beam into the DMZ, and he's using it to explode all of the landmines so that the North Korean army can march through this corridor into South Korea and invade it. Furthermore, the bad guy explains this to another North Korean soldier who is the supreme military commander of the North Korean forces. Okay, first of all, that's called exposition, specifically unnecessary exposition. Somebody who is the supreme commander of all the North Korean military forces would probably grasp the concept of blowing up the landmines to create a clear path for vehicles and people to travel through. This is not exactly advanced military tactics. Second of all, you have a weapon which can shoot a concentrated beam of sunlight and destroy anything on the planet Earth. Why in the fuck would you use this to blow up minefields to blow up a minefield, to blow up mines. I've had coffee. I have no excuse. I've been awake for three hours and I've had coffee. I have no excuse for not being able to talk. When all you have to do is simply blast military targets with it, or better yet, civilian targets, especially in democracies. I mean, can you imagine? All you have to do is call up the American people. You could put a YouTube video out and say, people of the United States, unless your government submits to the will of North Korea, we will use Icarus and we will start shooting randomly into your major cities. And because we are a democracy and the mob rules, the people of this country, because they are fucking terrified of everything, would very quickly request of their slave masters in Washington that we submit to North Korea. If you had such a weapon as Icarus, and if your enemies weren't smart enough to shoot at it with multiple missiles instead of just one, and if, of course, you know, you never had enemies who were on the fucking dark side of the planet, if Icarus never went behind the planet where it couldn't get any sunlight, why in fuck's name? It's like, it's like using drone technology to blow up a minefield so that we could send troops into Afghanistan. If you want to kill somebody in Afghanistan, you just kill them with the fucking drone. It's like giant fucking plot holes. Then, of course, James Bond and the bad guy are fighting. The bad guy pulls out two parachutes and says, oh, look, there's two parachutes, one for me, one for you. He throws one out of the airplane because the airplane is going down, of course. The airplane was piloted through the Icarus beam and is damaged and is going to crash. And then James Bond gets the bad guy out of the airplane with the parachute. He dies. So now James Bond and the eight-year-old boy Jinx are trapped on the airplane 
which is going down, and there aren't any parachutes. Really, this airplane had pilots, crew, other generals on it, the bad guy, the bad guy's henchman, Miranda Frost. There were only two parachutes on this entire fucking airplane. This is not like a little Piper Cub. This is a big, honking, fucking, like 747 size military airplane. But it's only got two parachutes on it. But see, of course, we have to have that stupidity in order to set up for the part at the end where in the bay of the airplane, it has a drop-down door and a conveyor for unloading. In the bay of the airplane are two sports cars and a helicopter. And of course, we have to set up for <clears throat> Bond and the eight-year-old boy, Jinx, to jump in the helicopter, turn on the conveyor belt so the cars get dumped out the back of the airplane. The airplane is traveling through the air. As we see at the end of the movie, the two cars are stuck in the ground almost right next to each other, which given the amount of time elapsed between when the conveyor belt dumped out the one car and dumped out the other car and the speed at which the airplane is flying, it would be impossible for those cars to land on the ground that close together. And I get it, it's a visual gag. You know, it's humor because the cars are stuck in the ground sticking straight up in the middle of some poor North Korean farmer's field or maybe it's a South Korean. There's no way to really know for sure. I'm going to assume North Korea because they didn't want to, because they wouldn't want to violate South Korean airspace. Who fucking knows? I get it. it it's a sight gag. It's just unrealistic. So the helicopter falls out of the back. Now, I am not an aeronautics expert by any stretch. But I'm relatively certain that if you're in a helicopter and the helicopter is up in the air and it starts falling and the engine's not running, the rotors would start turning because of the air moving past them. Unless the rotors are locked, which is perfectly possible because I am not an aviation mechanic. I do not know. Do helicopters have locks on the rotors? Perhaps they do, perhaps they don't. So then there's the whole big hubbub as they're trying to get the helicopter started to save their lives. Oddly enough, they managed to do it right before they hit the ground because that's how things always work in the movies. And at one point, the Americans and the British M, M from England and some of her henchmen are down in some little underground bunker in South Korea. They're monitoring the situation. Icarus is coming along and Icarus apparently goes over where they are underground or something like that. And I love this when this happens in the movies. All the computer monitors explode. Right, everything like bursts into flames and sparks are flying and shit like, you know, on Star Trek, on the old Star Trek, every time they'd get shot, every time the Enterprise would take a hit from the Klingon vessel, you know, sparks fly and all this other shit. Again, I, I get it's special effects, yada, yada, yada. Why is it that computer, I mean, like computer monitors are these bombs that explode. If computer monitors actually exploded that much in real life, nobody would put a computer monitor in their home or their workplace because the thing would fucking blow up and kill them. And then, of course, oddly enough, the computer monitors on the big screen, which they need to see what's going on outside to see that Bond has been victorious and Icarus has been turned off, Oddly enough, those monitors don't explode, but all the other monitors in the room do. So what does all this have to do with anarchy? Movies are a good way to teach yourself critical thinking skills. So all the critical thinking skills I've talked about here, you know, really, are there really only two parachutes on this airplane? Really. Oh, and by the way, the airplane, Jinx, the eight-year-old boy who works for the CIA, knew how to fly this North Korean airline, this North Korean airplane, military airplane. Now, how does she know that? Because I'm pretty sure nobody in the West is going to be selling giant airplanes to North Korea, right? So she just hot mined an airplane she's never flown before, made by Koreans, and figure this shit out and fly it. Sure, okay, whatever. I mean, sure, I get the basics of avi aviation are probably fairly universal. 
but I still have to wonder. Anyway, watch movies, use critical thinking skills, look for this kind of shit, and think about these things because when it's time for you to pay attention to the media, whether it's the television news, the radio news, the printed news, <clears throat> whatnot, the ability to engage these critical thinking skills will serve you well. And for those of you who are statist or minarchist and might be thinking about making the leap to ANCAP, might be considering learning to think for yourself, I understand that it's a little bit scary to immediately start applying critical thinking skills to things like the state, right? I mean, so, so for all of your life, you have believed that Obama is the Messiah and that he's given you free health care and he's created jobs and he ended the war and all this other stuff. And so for you to just right off the bat start applying critical thinking to that is a little frightening. It's like somebody who is a devout Christian or Muslim or Mormon or Catholic or whatever. Somebody who has been deeply devoted to their religion for their entire life, say 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, to suddenly start critically thinking about religion, it's scary. That's a giant fucking plunge to make. So start with movies. Watch movies and apply critical thinking. Look for all the, the unnecessary exposition. Look for all the things that characters, if they had done this, it would have been better. If they hadn't done this, that would have worked out. Look for all of the contrivances, like only two fucking parachutes on an airplane. Look for all of that stuff and learn how to do critical thinking via your movie watching activities. And it can be fun. I love sitting down with other people and watching movies and just picking the holes, and especially horror movies. Those are the best. Because like I said, most horror movies could not take place if the people in the movies were not completely stupid. I mean, you're in a house. Blood is running down the walls. You just get the fuck out. You don't be like, oh, there's blood running down the walls. Hmm, we should clean that up. No, there's fucking blood running down the fucking wall of the fucking house. Get the fuck out.